Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Today I want to show you guys the mod that I did on my 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. In this mod I added USB ports, a voltmeter, and additional DC connections to make it easier to use this battery. Now, to give you guys a reference of size, this is my Anchor 10,000 milliamp hour power bank, and this is over 500,000 milliamp hours of capacity. So, is this the world's largest power bank? Probably not, but it is a huge power bank, and I want to show you guys how I did the mod. Now, just in case some of you guys haven't seen a battery like this, this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's meant to replace the standard lead acid batteries in a storage system. These are usually meant for a larger off-grid application, so you can put them together in parallel and series to build a huge battery backup for either an off-grid cabin or your RV setup. But you can also use them standalone like this, and the modifications that I did make it easier to use, and it's basically just a very small compact DC power source. Now the first step of this modification requires you to remove the lid of the battery which will be voiding the warranty from the supplier. So just be aware if you want to move forward, you will be voiding the warranty. And there is inherent risk as you take this apart. You could damage the internal wiring, the BMS inside, or you could short circuit the battery. So just be aware there are risks. So move forward at your own caution. Now I have reviewed a bunch of these batteries in the past where I do a complete teardown to see what's inside. So I'm familiar with removing the lid on these. Now the easiest way to do that is by putting a screwdriver between these two sections, hammering it in, and then just kind of twisting to pop up the sealant. Now certain battery brands do use different types of sealant. The Power Queen brand seem to use a hardened sealant that pops off really easily. And then some other brands use like a rubber silicone sealant that's a little bit harder. But basically you just kind of pry the screwdriver all the way around until you get the lid off, and then you can gain access to the inside. So I'll go ahead and show you guys the modification that I did. Now when you first remove the lid, you'll see two main connections. You'll have the main positive wires going to the main positive terminal, and then you'll have your negative wires coming off the battery management system to this negative terminal here. And then all the other wires are from my modification. Now this may look a little bit complicated, but there's actually only six wires that are needed for this connection. You have three negative wires, two that come off the Anderson power pull port, and a negative wire that comes off the USB port, and those all go to the negative terminal. And then you have three positive wires. You have two positive wires for the Anderson power pole. They have two inline fuses. And then you have a positive wire for the USB ports that also came with an inline fuse. And those are all connected to the positive terminal. So very easy to connect this up. Let me go ahead and throw a wiring diagram on the screen. Now I got this modification idea because when I tore down this battery for my initial review, I noticed how much room there was between the sidewalls and the battery itself. There's a little bit of room over here, but this side next to the bus bar terminals is definitely bigger. Now you can have a bunch of these different options. This is a 12 volt cigarette plug and they fit perfectly down in this area. So you could add three or four of these as long as you have room for your wiring to connect up to the main positive and negative. Now this is probably the most dangerous part of this modification, but you have these exposed terminals here, and if you connect them together, you will short circuit the battery. So you wanna make sure that anything you stick down here is going to be insulated, whether that be wire or the actual connections on these uh, here. You wanna make sure that they're fully installed and covered up so that when you stick them down in this area, there's only plastic or rubber exposed and there's no metal on metal contact. Now here's a closer look at the wires that go down in that area. I have two insulated fuse covers and the actual terminals for the USB port are also insulated and everything that tucks down in there should not cause a short circuit. Now one of the last parts of this modification is where you install the ports that you want on the actual lid of the battery and you have to just drill the appropriate sized hole for each port. Now one of the easiest ways to do that is by using one of these spade bit kits. This is the Daredevil brand from Bosch. And uh, it just comes with a ton of different sizes of spade bits. And I've had really good luck with this brand. Basically, you choose the proper size spade bit and then it drills the hole and you're good to go. Now, securing the ports is fairly easy. The Anderson power pole comes with these two screw holes where I pre-drilled and screwed it down. And for all of these, you'll notice that they have this adjustable washer on the back that will tighten down to secure them in place. Now the placement of the ports is fairly important because remember you only have a limited space between the battery and the sidewall. So you wanna put these as close as they can be to this leading edge. Now let me go ahead and show you guys the process, but basically you take these wires 
and you tuck them down in this side area, and then you tuck these in, and then the lid should just go right down and snap on. Now the great thing about this modification is you can use these outputs over here to access the power inside, and you can still use the main terminals. Now it's nice that these come with these plastic insulators so that you can't short circuit the battery whenever those are installed. Okay, well that's basically the modification that I did to this battery. Now I will include all the parts that I use down in the video description, so if you guys are interested in doing something similar, you know where you can find those parts. Now the only thing that I'd have to finish up with is probably just finding a way to seal down the battery lid itself. Um, I've thought about putting a small screw in each of the corners, or maybe even a small bead of silicone in each corner. But remember, if you happen to blow a fuse, you have to be able to open this back up easily. Now, I'd love to get your guys' feedback. What do you think about this modification? Uh, basically, it just adds to the usability of the battery. You have uh, different ways to discharge and charge through the 12 volt socket Anderson power pole ports, and you have the ability to charge up mobile devices, cell phones, other power stations, uh, pretty nifty. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you guys aren't already subscribed because I have a ton of these videos on my channel. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one.